Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Ralf Spenneberg. I work for the Open Source Security GmbH in Steinfurt, Germany. We are a long-term partner of Tribe29. In addition to the product itself, we are offering trainings, consulting and support for ChickenK. This video will show how to configure an HA cluster using two ChickenK appliances. We've already talked about the appliance in other videos. The appliance is a Linux system specifically tailored for ChickenK. In addition, the appliance offers HA cluster features. To use HA availability, you will need two appliances. These may be hardware or virtual appliances. You can even mix the hardware appliance with the virtual appliance. Each appliance requires two network cards. When using hardware appliances, it is recommended to configure bonding first. Thus, a failed NIC will not have any impact on the cluster. If you use bonding, you will need two logical bonds on each appliance for the cluster to work. The nodes of the cluster operate in an active-passive mode. One node is active and used for the monitoring, while the other node uses a heartbeat protocol to detect a failed peer, and then the cluster will fail over to the former passive node. One NIC or bond on each node is used for the external communication. The other NIC or bond is used for internal synchronization between the nodes. The active node is used for the configuration of the cluster and for the monitoring of the host. The active node stores all the data on its local disk. Using the Linux distributed replicated block device, DRBD, this information is synced to the second passive node. DRBD works similar to a read one storage, just using disks on different hosts. The cluster communication is handled by CoroSync. In this video, I will show the setup of the cluster. I will use two virtual appliances. Therefore, I will not use bonding. We will need five IP addresses. Each node requires one IP address on the private DRBD link. In addition, each node requires one IP address on the public link, and we will need a virtual cluster IP address which will be associated with the active node. I've got two virtual appliances here, VIT1 and VIT2, and they have been briefly configured. So one has got the IP address 121, the other one the 122. Let's connect to the web interface and let's see what we need to configure for the cluster. So we log into the web interface and we go to the device settings. Network settings and here we see the simple network settings. Now we have to switch to advanced mode because we have got two network cards. And here we see the second network card and this second network card now requires additional IP addresses. This dialog can be used to create bonding as well and we configure our IP addresses here. This will be our private NIC for the DRBD link. To make this link available, we have to activate the changes. And now the link is up. Let's go back to the second appliance. This is the second appliance. And again, here we go to the device settings, network settings, switch to the advanced mode configure the network card save that and activate the changes now on both appliances the network cards have been configured so we go to clustering and here sometimes the devices will be found by auto discovery but in this case we will create a cluster with a non-discovered device here we have to enter the IP address on the partner. I'm currently on my first virtual appliance, so I enter the IP address of the second virtual appliance. I choose the data sync interface. That's the DRBD interface, the interface that we'll use for the DRBD, which is the second in my case. Then the cluster communication interface, I will use both. The cluster IP address, that's the virtual IP address the cluster should use for the active node and the net mask and the network card this IP address should be bound to and a ping address for the nodes to ping to check whether they have network access or not. We can save this configuration. Then we have to enter the password of the partner device. That's the 
um, web configuration password. Um, and now the first appliance will connect to the second appliance and overwrite everything. Now we are asked whether we want to delete all monitoring related data on the second device. As I said, this will be now completely overwritten. So if there's anything on that device, it will be erased during this process. Uh, the appliance I'm configuring this on will be the primary appliance, the master appliance, and the other one will just sync the data. This will now take a couple of seconds and we can monitor the cluster setup on the clustering page. Um, we are told that we don't have a time source. Time is important. Since I'm running in the virtualization environment, the time is synchronized via the virtualization. So um, uh, I don't care that much at this moment. Um, so let's just reload this page. And here we see that the cluster has found both nodes and time that is required to sync depends on the size of your disks, the speed of your network connection and the speed of the disks underneath. And we see that in approximately 45 minutes, the data will be synchronized. Once the synchronization is done, you will see that both the currently primary system and the secondary system are green. We are still seeing the red monitoring sites because uh, we don't have any running site yet. The site is stopped. But now you can configure the whole system using the cluster IP address. And you will always end on the currently active node. And that's the recommended way of uh, administering the system to use now the cluster IP address. Other things which are possible now is you can migrate or you can fail over manually to the other system using this icon here. And then uh, we'll see a failover has been triggered and the resources will be moved to the formerly passive system. This takes a couple of seconds be the primary system as you can see so now it's uh, there is no primary secondary anymore uh, the primary secondary uh, I talked about or well let's let's say it differently when we set up the cluster we actually have to decide which will be our leading node because the configuration on that node will override everything on the second node once the cluster is running we actually don't have any uh, such thing anymore. You should always uh, connect to the active node and everything you configure on the active node will be transferred to the passive node. So if I uh, go into the main menu here and change something, for example, now uh, create a new site, for example, um, or upload a check and K version, this will happen to both nodes at the same time. So if I upload now a chicken K version, the chicken K version of course will be uploaded to the currently active node and the active node will extract this package and will install this package. But underneath DRBD will make sure that everything happens on the disk on the second node as well. So usually you don't even notice any slow down because DLBD is fast enough to sync the information to the second node uh, immediately. Of course, that depends a little bit on your network connection between these two nodes. You should always make sure that this is a fast network connection, a fast synchronization connection between those two nodes. If you are interested in the bandwidth which is used between these two nodes and you want to know how much uh, bandwidth is used by the cluster, uh, it's very easy to find out because you have got Check and K. 
Now, if you monitor your cluster, what I would recommend is that you monitor both nodes individually using their physical IP addresses and that you monitor the cluster feature maybe as well using the cluster IP address. So let's take a look at how to monitor these two nodes. So I've now installed Chain-K. Let's go to the sites. Let's create a new site. Let's call the site cluster. Let's provide a password. Of course, you should use a longer password in production. You should use a strong password in production uh, because remember, this is the only thing that protects your uh, Chain K installation. Now there's um, one more thing we have to do to be able to monitor our uh, nodes. And uh, this is something to, uh, to do with the fact how the Check and K agent is pre-installed on these nodes. Okay, the site has been created and started. Now let's take a look at our Check and K agent. You will find the information about the pre-installed Check and K agent on the device settings page. And here we'll see the Check and K agent and it is available via TCP. Uh, but it's only allowed from localhost. Since we don't know which, which node is the currently active node, uh, we have to connect to the Check and K agent on the other node as well. And uh, there we have to use the normal uh, TCP traffic. So uh, let's change this and let's make sure it's available via TCP. We know the IP addresses which will be used by our uh, check and K server to connect to the agent. It is either the cluster IP address or the address of the first node or the address of the second node. So let's allow all these addresses and then we should be able to access the agent or to, to connect to the agent on both nodes. Okay, so now let's go to our site login go to our house let's create first a folder and in this folder we will create our first host node 1 IP address 192.168.0121 and let's discover the services, accept all. Let's go to the folder again. Let's add a second host, node 2. And here we have node 2. Accept that, add um, a cluster, and this I will call CMA cluster. Um, I will even give it an IP address. Let's save that. Oh, our nodes, I have to specify the nodes, of course. Let's save that. Now we specify the clustered services. Oh, let's, let's first take a look at our systems. So let's activate everything. So you see that we have some processes like the Apache process, which is running. This Apache process on, on port 5000 is only running on the active node. The site services are only running on the, on the active node as well. So if the cluster fails over to the other node, these services won't be located on this node anymore, but on the other node. If we monitor those services belonging to this node, 
and we have a failover, these services will become unknown on the same node and they will show up on the second node. We cannot monitor them really on the nodes themselves. So that's what the cluster is for. Let's go to our rules. Let's search for clustered services and let's configure a rule telling that all services starting with OMD on these nodes are cluster services. Try that and let's see what happens. So, um, so when the service name begins with OMD uh, on these two hosts, then the appropriate service should be moved to the cluster. Let's activate that. Let's go to our cluster again. Let's check the services. And here we see these monitored services now. And we're told here that this service does not implement a native cluster mode. So we have to configure the aggregation option for clustered services. Um, let's accept everything first. Let's check the aggregation option. So let's take a look at the aggregation rule. The easiest thing is to use failover, only one node should be active, and to uh, define that for the whole folder chicken K because that's where our nodes are located. Um, and uh, it will then apply to all these services by default. And if we do that and activate that, you will see that the cluster pretty much already works correctly. There's this one thing here. Uh, apparently we get some information from node when, one concerning the Apache process. So for this single cluster process, we probably want to use a different aggregation rule. We might want to use the best rule. Let me show that to you. Let's copy that. Let's specify that for the Apache service and let's choose best node wins. Let's save that. Let's change the order of the rules. Let's activate the changes. And then we, when we go to our cluster, everything is green now. We see that the Apache process is running, the OMD services are running, the site cluster statistics um, are shown to us, and we now have the information here on the system. And we are monitoring our notes. I hope you found this video informative. Uh, if you liked it, I would appreciate if you leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because this helps the video and the channel quite a bit and will promote this video to other users as well. Uh, so thank you very much and see you in the next video.